But if there is a favorite to finish in the top two, it would be 27-year-old Josh Davis, triple gold medalist from the 96 Olympics. Most golds, Rowdy, by any American man at those games. You know, I have seen Josh Davis take a lot of races out very fast, but I've never seen Josh take it out that fast. And he's still ahead of world record pace of the half. Davis looks like he's going to win it. And Davis sets an American record. He breaks a 12-year-old mark. What a swim for Davis. Welcome to the Ultimate Swimmer Podcast. I'm your host, three-time Olympic gold medalist and captain of the 2000 USA team, Josh Davis. Here at Ultimate Swimmer, we hope to inform, inspire, and encourage you to be the very best version of you, physically, mentally, and spiritually, on your swimming journey. This podcast is geared primarily for those of us in the aquatic disciplines of age group swimming, college swimming, para swimming, open water swimming, and master swimming. But we welcome all who are interested in peak performance, pursuing excellence, and swimming with purpose. So whether you are just starting out in the pool or you've been swimming your entire life, you were born for the water and you were also born for greatness. So each week we will explore the seven core habits of achieving greatness that will help take you to the next level in your journey to becoming an ultimate swimmer. This episode is brought to you by Breakout Swim Clinics, the longest running swim clinic tour of swimming Olympians in U.S. history. Breakout Swim Clinics has been providing swim clubs with the biggest Olympic names for the best prices with gold medal service since 1997. Go to BreakoutSwimClinic.com and bring some of their great Olympians to your team to help your swimmers break out. Bigger names, better prices, gold medal service. Break out with the best. BreakoutSwimClinic.com Hey everybody, welcome to another Ultimate Swimmers Podcast Show. I'm your host, Josh Davis, and I'm super excited about this week's guest. He really doesn't need much of an introduction because he's one of the most famous <laughs> distance swimmers in American history now, American record holder in the short course mile, American record holder in the 800, national champion for the University of Florida, double Olympic champion for Team USA in the 800 the mile just a few months ago in Tokyo, and the fastest last 50 ever in the distance <laughs> race. And now it's called the Bobby Blast or the Fink Fast Last 50. Please welcome to the show a true ultimate swimmer, Bobby Fink. Bobby, Bobby, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here. Thanks. Well, I was just in St. Petersburg uh, a few mm -hmm. weeks ago, and we just missed each other. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm so sorry about that. You got to throw out the first pitch at the Rays game, mm -hmm. and I was there doing a clinic for the kids at your home pool. And it was just so cool to see the excitement of the kids behind your career and just the, the synergy, the energy that you create for that team and for that area. Mm -hmm. And now you're doing that across the country. Um, so I just, just want to say thank you for what you did for Team USA. And uh, <laughs> it was just, I, I, I heard the viewing party for you uh, for the 800 was good. And then it got real huge for the mile. Yeah. <laughs> and then they had a great welcoming back party for you back in uh, St. Petersburg, Clearwater area when you got back. So just tell yeah. us a little bit about what it, what the su support means to you from your home club and home family back in Florida. I, yeah, obviously means the world, you know, without, without them, my coaches, obviously, you know, Fred Lewis um, over from St. Pete, he's been with me my whole journey, even like just going back home for, for holidays and then, just training in the summer when when UF wasn't open, I, I went back to him. So he he's played a big role throughout my whole career. Um, obviously, Nesty up here now is taking taking charge a little bit, but both of them still communicate and everything. It's kind of funny. Uh, one one time at a meet or something that Fred was just watching on TV, he like saw that I had like a bad turn or something and just like lit up Nesty's phone. I was like, why is he having a bad turn? But uh, yeah, they they communicate a lot. Um, but you know, just just the friends, family, and then everyone at the watch party. You know, it, it it means a lot to me. I never like expected to see like a watch a watch party like that or anything. But like when I saw it on camera after the mile, I was I was just like blown away. I it it just meant the world to me. Yeah, I had a watch party for my '96 Olympics. <laughs> And uh, just all the little kids at the pool just cheering, mm -hmm. going crazy. It, uh, it's, yeah. a great, it's a great feeling. Yeah. <laughs> that you, you, you lifted someone's spirits and got them excited about swimming. And, mm -hmm. you know, they're just so proud that, you know, they claim you and 
that you're from their team and everything. So I, I just had a blast. The swim families from St. Petersburg were great. Getting to ch chat with Coach Fred on deck uh, while I was there that weekend yeah. was, was great. Um, I got to talk to your dad. I've got some great stories from your dad. Yeah. <laughs> that was really, really fun. So, mm -hmm. um, but just give us a recap of what the last three months is like. I mean, uh, you know, maybe take us back to the training camp and, mm -hmm. and just any highlights from the, from the training camp that, that stick out to you? Yeah. So the training camp was a lot of fun. It started in Hawaii yeah. and we stayed there for two and a half weeks and then went to Tokyo, stayed there for like another two weeks and then went to the, to the village when it opened up. But yeah, Hawaii, Hawaii was a lot of fun. We, we trained in a couple different pools. Um, I thought that was like pretty interesting. And also like, it, it always like made it a good guessing game in the morning, which pool you're going to. So that I got my day going a little bit, just trying to figure that out. But um, yeah, I had some really good practices there. Not all the time, had some bad ones, but you know, it's, it's always fun to spice things up a bit with a bad practice, but uh, you know, just like not even swimming wise, we were right on the water. So when we were only like singling some days, we'd go to Waikiki beach and body surf out there. And you know, the surfers probably hated it, but I, I mean, I'm, I'm only there for two weeks. I don't know if I'll ever be back in Hawaii. Maybe it's a beautiful place. I love to, um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try and take full advantage of it. So, yeah, that that was a lot of fun. And then getting back into Tokyo, uh, little little bit of a hiccup getting there because our flight got canceled. So we had to book a whole new flight. Um, stayed in Hawaii for like an extra day, but it, it is what it is. Um, yeah. And then just had had some more good practices, and then it was just it was just time to get ready for for racing. Now, are you next to Kieran Smith all the time at those training camps, like back home, or do you mix it up and throw Katie Ledecky in there? Like, what was what was your training mates like? I trained with Michael Michael Brenniger a lot, yeah, because uh, he and I were swimming the same things. Um, in the beginning, Kieran and I would join each other on a couple practices, but like when when we like really start to taper, I'll still do like a little bit more than him, and especially since he raced before I did. He raced like the first day and I was, I think I was like the fifth or fourth day around there. Yeah. So like he, he needed to go down sooner than I did. Only trained with Katie twice, I think, when I was there. Only twice. And on one of the times, she kicked my butt. I, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm not embarrassed by it. It's Katie. No. Um I did get her on 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 the hundreds though. I got that. That was all me. But um, no, she's insane to train with. Like, I, I've heard stories before, and I've seen like the swim swim stuff. But she is insane. <laughs> um, but yeah, well, well, and, and give us give here. us the lowdown. What, what did she beat you on? Was it two hundreds or one fifties or what was it? I can't. Okay, so the set was like a. It was like a three hundred. Just like you know, like fast, yeah. um, and like, like get going. And then it was two, two hundreds, I think. And it, it was like, they're all like the same. You, you wanted to be like mile pace, except not at mile pace, like go a little slower, I guess, yeah. other than the hundreds, like you wanted to be at mile pace on the hundreds. Um, so it was one, three hundred and then two, two hundreds and then three, one hundreds, I, I believe. I could yeah. be wrong about the three 100s. It might have just been one single 100. But she went 302 on the 300. <laughs> That's so fast. <laughs> like, That's what so are fast. you doing? <laughs> I, I, she, we weren't going at the same time. I went, so she was in a lane next to me, and Brenniger was also in that lane. He led that lane. So Bren, Brenniger and I left at the same time. I think we went like 303, which isn't bad. That's good. It's very <laughs> That's like good. what I needed to be, you know. Um, and then Jordan Wolomowski was going behind me. So Jordan had to race her. So I felt bad for Jordan. Jo <laughs> I think Jordan like just edged her out, but like even 302. Oh yeah. That's crazy. That's so fast. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. And now, now well, she's I mean, here in Gainesville too now. So Yeah, no, did she already move in? Yeah. Yeah. She she started practice with us Friday morning. Wow. So just three days into it. Yeah. And yeah. uh so she seems happy and you guys are, are now now your training mates. It's it's you excited? Yeah, yeah. She she pushed us this morning. I won't lie about that one either. She <laughs> she pushed us this morning. Well, give, She's give only us been back in. Tell, tell us what happened on that one. What was what was it? She's just only on been back one? in for two weeks. And I've been swimming for since like August 25th or something like that. And she's only been swimming for two weeks now. And she she was pushing us. It was a it was a set of like an eight hundred strong pull. Yeah. Um and then like three six hundreds and then another eight hundred and then two six hundreds and then another eight hundred and then a six hundred. Um the the six hundreds, like the three of them were heart rate twenty four for ten seconds, and then the two were heart rate twenty six for ten seconds, and then the last one was like get on it from heart rate twenty eight for ten seconds. So she was going third in the lane next to me, and I didn't know it was her at first. So I'm like, you know, I'm it's a long course, by the way. So I'm I'm like swimming with Alfonso Mestre on the other side of me and Kieran Smith on the other side of me. I was in the middle. And, you know, after the first two 600s, I was like, they are really pushing it in the back of there because <laughs> it's Katie. She's beating all the guys going third in that lane. So everyone <laughs> in the back is sprinting. And me and Alfonso are completely unaware of, like, why it's going on. And then I noticed it on the third one. So then I started sprinting because I'm like, screw this heart rate i can't lose or anything i have to win <laughs> so i just start sprinting and then you know from there we 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 were aware of katie just mowing down all the guys um so so we started pushing it and we did win we did win but uh yeah she, she pushed us jeez she must love it she must love running the yeah she's she's got to she's got to be used to it yeah, for for us, <laughs> yeah, she she's got to be so used to it. It's gonna be fun. She she she's gonna make us a, a lot better here. So uh, uh, it'll, it'll be fun. I when I heard the news, I was like, of course, that makes perfect sense. You guys mm -hmm. have a great group, and you know you're still right in the middle of a lot of goals left and fresh. Mm -hmm. You know you're still relatively, you know, in the middle mm -hmm. of your career. Yeah, and, and you know she's not old by any means. So I think this is some mm -hmm. good some good uh, energy that, that will help her, will help you. So I, I just, I thought it was a perfect idea. Yeah. I yeah. Love that. We were very excited when, when uh, we first got word of it, Nessie, because she came down like earlier, she was like scouting out areas and stuff. So uh, Kieran and I went to dinner with her and just, just like caught up and everything like that. So like when we first got like official word of it, it was like really exciting to, yeah. to hear and everything. So she didn't really like call you guys. She just said she just showed up in town and y'all just kind of caught up when she got to town to research. Yeah, she so she called. I'm I think she was like in touch with Nessie um, right. and Nessie was in touch with uh, Greg and stuff like that. So there, there was a lot of communication. It was just like she didn't want it like open or anything yet, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, she, she wanted like privacy and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so Nessie came to us and when she was scouting out areas and stuff, we, we were able to catch up for a quick dinner and it was, it was really fun. Yeah. Well, she's just such an impressive person all the mm -hmm. way around. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm excited for you guys. Y'all will make each other better. Um, <clears throat> now let's just, let's just relive Tokyo real quick. You kind of had to wait around the first few days and then you're in the 800 nice qualifying Mm -hmm. um, what, what was going through your mind? How much energy did that expend? You know, mm -hmm. what was, what were you thinking going into the final? Uh, so yeah, I'm normally a big nighttime swimmer, like swimming at like seven o'clock at night around there. So I wasn't too nervous about, I, it was prelims, but it was at night. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I just wanted to, like, make it back. That was my whole goal just throughout the Olympics was just to try and make the finals, you know. I, I wasn't expecting to, to medal or anything. But then I, I dropped a lot of time. I knew I could be around, like, the 43, 44 range, but I didn't know I'd go, like, 42 with loafing a little bit on the last 50. Because um, I, I saw, like, the guys I saw, I was, like, third in, third in the heat. I was like, okay, this is fine. I don't need to overdo anything right now. Um 
But yeah, so I, I was 42 at prelims, 42-8, I think. Yeah. And and I was like, it was, it was pretty good. You know, I was, I was really happy with it. I wasn't fully expecting that or anything and just wanted to make it back. But then we got a whole day off and then swam the next morning. And I knew I'm not the best morning swimmer. So I stretched a lot. I ate. I took like a 10 minute warm. I did anything I could to make it feel like it was nighttime. Yeah. Basically, which, you know, overall you can't make it feel like it's nighttime, but you can, you can still take all those, all those necessary requirements to give it your best shot. You yeah. You, you, you implement the routine, trusting yeah. the process that this, mm-hmm. these, all these little things are going to. Yeah. Yeah. The, the finals field. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the Olympics, I'm going to do whatever I can. So, <laughs> um, yeah, after, you know, after that swim, I was obviously super excited, but I had another race to go and that the Maya is like, I, I consider it my baby, you know, like yeah. I, I can win gold in the 800 and be super excited. But if I have a disappointing mile, I, I will be sad about it because yeah. I like, I love the, I hate the mile, but like, it's, it's my baby, you know? Yeah. I, I always want to do good in that. Um, so, but real quick, the the last 50 on the 800, you flip, what were you thinking in your head? Like, all right, let's just kick like crazy and see what happens. Um, I saw that I was catching up a little bit really. And Mm -hmm. then it's it's always fun to try and catch people and, you know, it's kind of like my strategy in the 4am. So it's always, it's always exciting. Um, just like you see people dying and you know, you're, you're coming up on it and you're like laughing it's all fun but uh yeah I, I didn't know i had that in me to be completely honest i was just trying to do my best to to get by i think romanchuk was next to me i was just yeah i was just trying to do my best to get by him and then luckily he was one of the ones tied with paul Chenary at the lead and uh i was able to get my hand on the wall yeah well it was awesome i let out a huge yell at the TV. <laughs> I mean, it was just primal. I was just like, yeah, <laughs> yell. I was, yeah. Like, ah! I had just, I had never seen anything like that. Mm. And uh, no, I don't think many of us had. So it was yeah. just so cool. <laughs> Thank and, you. and then, you know, of course, on the last day, on the eighth day in mm. your mile, you were looked, you were so chill. Yeah. <laughs> Same kind of thing. And then the last lap, like, here he goes again. And yeah. it was faster than the 800 last 50. And yeah. Just, like, our minds blew again. And we yelled again. Yeah. yeah. I, that, my, my, just, my, my strategy, and, and that was my strategy in the mile um, after after the 800, how, how the 800 went. That, that, that became my strategy in the mile to – to try and just like sit back with them and whenever they pushed, I'd push and just like sit with them, probably annoy them a lot. But uh and then just go at the last at, at the last fifty. And it was it was pretty I was pretty lucky because I could see where both of them were at. You know, I didn't I didn't have Gregorio all all the way in lane eight and I couldn't see him in the eight hundred at all. Um but yeah, so I, I knew where I knew where everyone was in that race, which was pretty fortunate for me. I got I got a good lane in the morning for that one. Yeah, you really had a a, a good look at everybody in, in, a, in a perfect mm-hmm. spot to do your thing. Well, I just want to say thanks for inspiring <laughs> me, and because it really does. I've had some great practices just thinking <laughs> <about> you. <laughs> I'm like, what would Bobby do right now? Uh, so so thank you and and on behalf of all the distance kids and swimmer kids out there uh thank you it was i was in their shoes one day just just watching watching jaeger and uh oh i can't think of his name he's famous for doing the thirty one thousands. i remember that eric vint yeah yeah Yeah. so i I was always in their shoes one day so i and just just seeing a little kids, it just reminds me. I was like, I used to be you. you know? yeah. I used to be looking up to all these guys. That's right. What 
what is, did you have some some go to YouTube videos that you used to watch to get pumped up? No, um, I don't really listen to music or anything or, or YouTube before I race. One thing I do like doing is watching uh, some good movies before I swim. Not like before I swim, but like during the trip. What, what, and, are, your, what are your favorites? Um, it's so it started in 2016 actually with a uh, race uh, about Jesse Owens. That oh, was for Junior yeah. Fanfax. Yeah, and then from there it went on to the Rocky movies and all the um, the new ones that came out, Creed, and then but during Tokyo it was Fast and Furious. All, <laughs> all nine movies. Or I don't think I got to watch the ninth. No, I didn't get to watch the ninth one there. But it was all the, all eight Fast and Furious movies there. <laughs> yes. That's awesome. I didn't even oh. watch them in order too. I watched them from eight to one. It was, I was just watching whatever. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, back back when I was on the USA team, and this is, uh, what is this? Ninety six to yeah, two thousand. So this is 95 to 2000, my five years on the USA team. Um, we had a v VHS player, a VCR. Yeah. And so we were always lacking for good videos on the VH mm. VCR player. So yeah. I donated my favorite pump up movies to the USA team box uh, <laughs> that would travel around, you know, the big steel boxes that would travel with all the food and stuff. Yeah. So I put all my VCR or VHS tapes and I had all the Rocky I yeah. had part. I had, I had all these, you know, my favorite motivational movies. Mm -hmm. And I donate them to the USA team. And then, of course, they got rid of VHS tapes. Yeah. So, so they, they threw away all my motivational videos. So <laughs> but now you can watch them online. So yeah. I'm, I'm so proud of you for watching the Rocky movies. My of course, my, those, those ones are classic motivational movies. I, oh, yeah. You, you can't, like, talk about motivational movies without mentioning them, so. Oh, yeah, those training montages are the best. Yeah, yeah, by far. By far. <laughs> yeah, one and two are classics. Three and four are my favorites. Five's terrible, but six and yeah. seven are fine. Seven and eight are great, the new creeds. Uh, so there's eight now. It's just uh, yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well, I love that. <clears throat> well, let's, let's – um, go back in time. I mean, you, you established some distance records by the time you were 14. So you knew you were, you, this was your thing, open water, long distance. You had, you had the gift, mm -hmm. but looking back, what is something your parents and coaches did that really helped create that foundation? Can you look back and, you know, what was your first, you know, what was kind of ages six to 14 like that really worked well for you? Um, the one thing for my parents, I guess, is that, like, even if I did bad, it was it was always as long as I tried, they they were happy, and you know, I I I should be happy, you know, um, and that that wasn't even just swimming; that was just like in life too, like grades or anything. As long as I tried or did my best, you know, there's there's just things to learn about. Um, yeah. <laughs> And from my coach, it was just all competitiveness, um, you know, just, just racing others in the pool. My sisters and I were super competitive, uh, you know, at that, at those ages for me, I think, yeah, I didn't get faster than them until I was 13, but ever since then I was chasing them because I yeah. wanted to beat my older sisters, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm the little, I'm the little guy and I, you know, but, uh, yeah, it, it was just competitiveness and just, just, just trying to do your best, even when your best isn't what what you consider good enough, or or whatever. You're not, you're not like satisfied with it. Just, you know, as long as you tried and you got you got something to learn about, really. Um, and just just trusting your coaches, really. I, I learned that a lot just watching my older sisters, trusting Fred, and I, I gained that from them and. I, I trusted Fred all the way up, and then now, now Nessie. It's like how I decided my college decision actually was just if I, which coach I trusted the most, um, and then and that was Nessie. So, and it worked out. <laughs> so, I love it. Well, I've I've been a good acquaintance of Anthony's for for years, um, 
and I've just always been impressed mm. with his professionalism and uh, you know ability to create a championship season championship framework and uh, mm. that's so cool what uh, obviously Fred is you know isn't afraid to give you the long stuff yeah and it's tricky for a lot of young people to buy into yeah but, you know I mean I know you had your sisters to chase I know it was kind of the culture of the team and it was just that was just the cool thing to do when you're on SPA is to just be be tough and mm. to grind it out yeah um, you know so I know there's a level where you just get used to it you do it enough you get used to it mm. but uh but you know, in some regards, you kind of you you really got to take care of yourself out of the pool. You got to kind of eat yeah. right, sleep right to handle yeah. that load. <laughs> and not a lot of young people, high schoolers, know how to do that mm -hmm. like a professional does. So, what what helped you keep up with that workload? Keep up with that that yardage, you know, week after week. Um. So my. My parents, my mom, my mom cooked like a lot of the dinners because my dad and I, we wouldn't get, we wouldn't get back late. We wouldn't get back from practice till like seven, seven thirty, and you know, <laughs> that's really late for us because we we'd always go to bed at like eight thirty, nine o'clock um, yeah. at our household. So my my mom would cook a lot of dinners and just like a lot of vegetables <laughs> and stuff like that. But I I don't shy away from my fair share of, uh, of junk foods. I love Culver's. Um, and I live right next to one too in, in Gainesville. So I'm pretty happy about that. But, uh, you know, and then like, even in college, we, we have a great nutritionist. Um, her name's Blair and freshman and sophomore year, we'd go to training table. Um, which it's just like the athlete dining hall really. Yeah. And we go there, they have all these, plate options and everything of like lean gain and maintain your weight and stuff like that. So like you, you could like follow those cards and if you needed more food for like, I, I was on gain when I came in cause I was 153 pounds when I, when I came in, I was, I was pretty light and really skinny. So I was on gain. So I, I was able to get an extra to go box with, with a whole bunch of food and wow. I gained like 15 pounds within two months or so month and a half around there um but yeah i'm 176 right now so i've gained 22 pounds since coming to college yeah, yeah. um That's but yeah it's just just the people around me just helping me out I, I had some really good resources and usa swimming now they they always send like nutritionist stuff and if you need like help with that you just reach out to people really yeah that's good. That's good practical advice. I appreciate that. My mm -hmm. freshman year at Texas, I gained 20 pounds just yeah. in the dining hall in the weight room. I was, yeah. <laughs> I was 165, like the middle of August. Mm -hmm. And then by Christmas, I was 185. Yeah. It was just, just dining hall and lifting, you know, it was great. Yeah. <laughs> so give us, give us some, uh, some of your favorite moments at University of Florida so far. Any uh, epic races, relays, you know, SEC, I know is, just the best conference and you know nc2a's there's nothing like it mm -hmm. um any any special moments that uh that you'd like to share with us from your career so far in college uh so one that immediately jumps out to me is a relay from S this past secs actually and because of like covid protocols they couldn't have all the teams go in like two heats it was only like four teams per heat yeah so our, it was a four by 50 medley relay. Our, there was three heats and we were in the second heat and like all the, the fastest teams were at the, they were in heat three. So our guys went and we put up like a really good time that, you know, could win. And, and then the next heat when went and we, we were cheering and everything like that. You know, we were super excited because we, we thought we had a really good shot. But then the next team, next heat went and they were going really fast but then i think we won by like a couple hundreds and our our bleacher sex section just erupted it was so loud like you, for, you forgot fans were there basically yeah we, we were incredibly loud and I, I had a boot on over there and i was just screaming and 
Nessie and see just look over and they're just like mouths are open and everything like that. It's it was so exciting. And you know, the guys are coming over just from warm down and they're cheering and warm down and everything like that. So as you see, this is a energy packed to me. It's, it's exciting to be there. And um, that was, that was without the, the women's team there too. So like it was, it was even smaller. And yeah. this time, this time though, we, we get the, the women's team there and they're looking really good this year. Hopefully we can bring both the, both the titles home this time. Wow. Uh, that'll be yeah. pretty exciting. Yeah. That would be amazing. I'm going to my first SECs this February. Oh, my, really? You're going to be there? My son, Luke, is a 200 fly guy for Missouri. Missouri? Yeah. So he's, yeah. Hoping, to, he's hoping to make it this year. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I just I can't wait because I, 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 I've been watching it on, you know, TV the last few years. Yeah. And, Whoa. <laughs> yeah. But but yeah, that was cool. Y'all won that sprint medley relay because, mm -hmm. you know, without Caleb, you know? Yeah, without Caleb, too. So. <laughs> Still good, yeah. yeah. Um, now, would wasn't that? Did you tie your record for this like twice in a row, or was it the? I missed it by a tenth. I missed it by ten. Yeah, so so yeah. close in a, in a mile. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's good you got something to look forward to, and you're just off Connor Yeager's American record in a mile. Mm -hmm. So, so that's a good goal to have in front of you—a little carrot to kind of keep you going. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Katie can help you do that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but, definitely. <laughs> but um, can you share with us any of your any of your goals for the for the college and uh, USA season the next uh, year or two or three? Yeah, so I don't. I'm gonna be honest. I don't set time goals. Um, I kind of just like swimming in, until I'm like satisfied with with the time, you know. Yeah, yeah. Which a lot of the time doesn't happen but you know i just keep going until i am satisfied with the with with the time i got and then and then i just move on but uh yeah it's honestly just do your best and 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 have fun i'm, I'm swimming till 2024 hopefully i can make the team there and then um seeing how these next three years go uh maybe swim to 2028 um Really just have to, really just have to see how things go. Um, I love to. It's in, it's in the U.S., so that that'd be pretty exciting over in L.A. Um, it is. It, it does make yeah. another four years of training doesn't seem so bad because you can race in front of the home crowd, and it's yeah, it is special. I got to do that for the '96 Olympics. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. It was yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. So yeah, L.A. 28 is 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 pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, but Paris 24 is not very far away. I mean, in the next no. couple of years is going to fly by. You know. Yeah, yeah. Just it's, a year uh, after this year, it's basically just just a, a season, and then it's the Olympic year all over again. So, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's uh, it's very close, very close. Well, I just want to give you a chance to give any shout outs to your sisters, Ariel, Autumn, or your mom and dad. Jeannie and Joe, any or any of your sponsors, or any 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 coaches, any anything like that, that uh, you know has really meant a lot to you uh, in your career so far. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, all all friends, family, coaches, and everything, and and you know, even even old friends just from elementary school. I, I got a couple Instagram DMs from from them, just like I remember you. <laughs> um but yeah just yeah just from elementary school um that, that was really cool to see and just just reaching back out to them but um you know i just 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 my coaches and and family and just like really 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 shout them out for for being with me on the, on this whole process i'm not i'm not always the easiest person to coach cuz i hate bad practices but i also love dying or watching people die, both of them, both of them go, go away. There, there's this one practice. I'll, it was four 100s from the blocks on two minutes, and then four 50s, two of them on one thirty, two of them on a minute, all from the blocks, just like all out sprint. And Alfonso and I were just dying. It was so bad. We'd go twenty six. It was long course, so yeah. we'd go out twenty six, and then we'd come back like thirty two. Like it was, it was bad, but. <laughs> Every time we got to the wall, we were like, we would just start laughing at each other because like we couldn't do anything about it. We just kept dying and over and over and over again. And 
it was, it was just, it was a funny practice, but, um, yeah, just, you know, just coaches being with there, being there the whole time, listening to all the, all the complaining and being like, why, why do I got to do this? And also, you know, also waking up at, they got to get up for, earlier than we do. Like we, we complain about how early we get up, but like they get up earlier. So yeah, <laughs> getting, getting up earlier and coming up with the practices, being creative and everything like that. Just huge shout out to them because their, their job is a lot harder than our job, you know, yeah. um, especially even during the races there, our stress, our stress goes away when, they're, when we dive in, but their stress just goes up when, yeah. when we're swimming. So just shout out them, shout out to them for dealing with all that stuff. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, my family just for being there the whole time honestly <laughs> that's cool what were what were ariel and autumn's races what were their favorite events their favorite events were they distancey too yeah they did distance i I wouldn't say they loved it too um autumn okay i know autumn's favorite or least favorite event was anything with breaststroke yeah summers was anything without i can tell you their least favorite events all day yeah they hated fly and breaststroke um I'd say they're probably their favorite events were probably like two back. Oh, yeah. That's cool. yeah. So it's not it's not long, but it's they're 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 good at it too. So they they get to have fun with that one. It's a little bit of an off, but also one of their main events, if that makes yeah. sense. Oh, that's great. Uh it was fun watching them cheer you on on, on TV in Tokyo. It was mm -hmm. cool. Very special. Yeah. Um speaking of dying in practice though, I came up with a quote for my college team and for my ski camps. <laughs> And let, I want to hear I want to hear your take on it. Tell me if this is a worthy mm -hmm. quote, okay? I, I mean, yeah. let's die together in private, in practice, so that we don't die in public at the championship moment. Yeah. So it's yeah. it's like let's just let's just just die together. Like it's okay to reach failure. Let's let's just just fail yeah. hard. Let's die hard. Yeah, that, that's a it's a common thing today. People are are afraid of dying yeah. and, and failing. And it's it's just practice. Yeah, um, it's just practice. It's so it's okay to die. I die a lot in practice. I, I fail a lot in practice. I get my butt kicked kicked a lot in practice. Um, but <laughs> it, it's a it's a thing today. People people are afraid of dying and and, and failing in practice. But if there's a time to die and fail, it is practice. It's not not during the meet. Yeah. Yeah. And your, your body adapts, your body gets used mm -hmm. to it. And then when you go to the meets, you don't, you don't die as bad because you've, yeah. you've been there a thousand times before. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're used to it already. So that's good. Just buckle in. <laughs> well, I, I have a little lightning round of questions for you. Some of your favorite things so we can get to know Bobby Fink a little bit more. Okay. Uh, what's your favorite color? Blue. Yeah. Cool. Favorite food, food item. Ooh. Pizza, burgers, or a steak? <laughs> I got three of them. I have to have three. You got to decide between each of them. Do you, do you have a go-to dessert thing? A favorite dessert thingy? Publix chocolate ice cream. Nice. Uh, yeah. Favorite sports teams besides the Gators? Um, I'm really into the Bucks right now. Obviously, you know, I'm from Tampa, and we just won the Super Bowl, so that was really exciting. Um, I don't really watch any other sports. To, to be quite honest, um, I, I like watching, I find myself watching soccer and I find it like really interesting. It just, it just takes a while. I just like sink into the couch and watch it, but I don't know any of the teams. Yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> really. Now how, I didn't, since I missed your pitch at, at mm -hmm. the Rays stadium. Oh yeah. Rays of, Rays of course. Yeah. What, uh, how was your pitch though? Was it pretty good? Was it kind of in the strike zone? So, Okay. It was dead center, except it was a little tall. It went over right. his head, but it was it was dead center. But it's, it still looked cool for TV. That's all yeah, that matters. Yeah, it, it was fine. Yeah, awesome. You got it wasn't it wasn't one that was went way to the left or way way to the right. It, it was a good pitch. Yeah, you got to represent the swimmers and make us look cool. Yeah. <laughs> so good job. Um, what's your what is your favorite event? I mean, you you've mentioned it the, the mile. I'm assuming it's the mile, but it, could it be the 800 or or the uh, uh, I really like two breaststroke and two, uh, two breaststroke and two back. 
Um, two brush stick, I'm just horrible at, but I like I like the pullouts and stuff like that. I love I love doing pullouts because I always it's like a game of like how far you can go each time. Yeah. Um, and then like two backstroke. I'm not putting a mile up there. It's very close to my heart, but I'm not, not putting it up there. Um, but yeah, two, two backs fun. It burns the legs a little bit. Um, and I'm not too bad at the two backs. So that, that was always fun to do. That's cool. What's your, what's your lifetime best yards two back? Uh, I think only a 143. That's good. Yeah. That was over at, um, during COVID over with Fred in 2020. Yeah. But so like not this past summer, but the one before that, I was like one of the little meets he held. I, I actually went a best time over there. <laughs> so, That's yeah. a good time. That's a great time. What's your favorite pool you've ever raced in or, or swam in? You have a favorite pool? Yes. I don't want to say Tokyo just cause I, I was just there. The pool is very nice, but if there's tri the trials pool is very nice. I'll I'll say that one. This mm -hmm. I like kind of like a dark area, but like not too not too bright or anything. And trials kind of like hits that. Like the pool is like it's bright, but then like around it's like a little dark, and I I, I, I like that. And just like jumping in, it, it's a really good pool. Yeah. Yeah. Now, did you race uh, in 2012 or just 2016? 2016 yeah 2016 yeah. was my first i think for most of us like for me i did my first trials when i was 19 and i didn't feel mm -hmm. ready i was just kind of overwhelmed and but mm -hmm. i'm so glad i went to kind of get one under yeah the water, yeah get the kinks out so was that was 2016 like that for you just a good experience yeah i mean none of us my, my coach myself or like anyone was really expecting me to make make the team there or anything. I was only a sixteen year old at the time. You know, I was just going there to see see how good I could do and and have fun and gain some experience. I ended up making the finals though, in the mile. That was nerve wracking. Um, mainly be, not because I wanted to make the team or anything, but but because I didn't want to get last in the heat. Um, that was the main thing about that heat. Uh, Zane Zane was there. He kind of took the bullet for everyone. He, he, he died. He, he was hurting a little bit, but uh, yeah, that, that part was nerve wracking. Not, not making a team just didn't want to get last. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Uh, what's the favorite city you've ever been to as a tourist or swimmer? Do you have a favorite city in the world that you enjoyed? Palo, um, Palo Alto in California was really nice for 2019 nationals. Yeah. The, the weather was great. Um, pools, pool was great. Just uh, the whole setup was yeah, it was fun. the The hotel you have got for us was really nice. I very mm -hmm. appreciative uh, of that one. And yeah, uh, Palo Alto. That's cool. Yeah, that's one of my favorites too. Um, you have a favorite drill that you do for freestyle? You have a favorite go to drill? We don't really do the drill at U. Well, we sort of do it. We just like add something to it. We just add like a a shark fin. But I kind of like. It, we back at home we call it six feet drill you just go on your side for six like a six count pause and then you switch sides and stuff like that i do it all the time for my meat warm-up um but yeah I, I find that one helps me a lot just like with rotation and, and and trying to get a six beat kick i have a five beat five beat kick um my, my feet always hit each other on the last kick so it doesn't count but uh yeah we, we keep we keep working on the six beat though there's something there's something me and my coach has been working on. Yeah, that's cool. Do you have a favorite weight room movement? A favorite thing you do in the cleans the off the blocks. Um so yeah, just off the blocks. You don't you don't have to hold the bar out after each rep. You you get the rest a little bit. You get like a second pause and but then you gotta you gotta power it up again. So that that one's fun to do. That's cool. That's cool. Well, this has been great to get to know you and uh, just so excited for the second half of your career. And uh, any, any uh, insight on, on, I guess, I don't know if you can say it, if you have a favorite company you might be looking to work with, or is that still top secret? Still top secret. That's right. Cause you still got eligibility. So yeah, well, I'm allowed oh, you, to, it's just you're allowed to, right. 
yeah, we, we've been working on um, my agent stuff. And once we get that one done, then we're then we're going to start bran- branching out to hopefully some companies. Toyota, I'm looking at you. Just a car, car company, anywhere, anyone? <laughs> car company. Uh, but yeah, a car company would be nice. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's great. Well, I can't wait to cheer you on this year and uh, keep up the great work. And uh, thanks for being an ultimate swimmer. And we'll see you around the pool soon. Hey, it was it was great for having. It was great being here, and you know, thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us on this Ultimate Swimmer podcast. We hope you enjoyed hearing from these Olympians and life champions, and how certain habits and decisions help them on their journey, and they can help you too. If there is an ultimate swimmer from your team that you would like to nominate that we can recognize on our show, just email me at josh at joshdavis.com. That's josh at joshdavis.com. And tell us about how your ultimate swimmer is making a difference in your swimming community. And that's the goal, to make a difference and swim with purpose. Not only are you getting better, but you're helping those around you get better too. When you realize you were born for the water, born for greatness, and born to serve others, you are on your way to becoming an ultimate swimmer. I'm Josh Davis. Until next time, keep streamlining and keep smiling. See you around the pool soon.